So let's shift forward uh, and talk about chill. Mm -hmm. What is chill? Uh, Amanda, can you call it up on the screen? So let me ask everyone here, uh, how many of you uh, pay for cable television? Or satellite? You don't count, sorry. <laughs> uh, OK, wait, so well, higher, 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 higher. Personally or parents? Uh, no, no, personally. How many of you personally pay for cable television? And I said television, I, not, not, not IP, not data. So I mean, if I would say this is like 30% of the room, 20% of the room. So what's, what's happening today is there's some fascinating stuff going on that's largely driven by the internet. And you know, everyone here is, I mean, you guys live in a bubble. You guys are on YouTube, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram. You're getting your, inf your information and your entertainment in a vastly different way than your parents do. And so, you know, what they say about big opportunities, big opportunities happen when there's big shifts. And there's a tectonic shift going, or sort of in motion right now, around how people receive content. And so our thesis with Chill is actually quite simple. Um, we're building sort of what we believe in 10 years will be the opportunity for, to do direct-to-consumer entertainment. So what does that mean? Um, so I, I'm sure some of, you, you know, so, some of you in here love comedy. You remember Dave Chappelle? You know, Dave Chappelle was an incredible stand-up performer. He would do something with Comedy Central. Dave had an agent, a manager. He had to do a deal with Comedy Central. Comedy Central then had to figure out how to pay him, how to put it up, how to market it. I mean, there's all of these steps involved. And the interesting thing with um, you know, direct-to-consumer entertainment is because of so many different factors, it's easier to shoot stuff today. Uh, it's easier to edit stuff, all of this stuff because of the information revolution. IP directly into the house, you guys can get Dave Chappelle without Comedy Central. And so, you know, broadcast television has been around for about 100 years, cable television about 50 years. But what's really happening now is we're just in that early stage of this new cycle. And the new cycle is you're going to get all of your entertainment via IP. And so we're sort of gearing up and building all of the tools underneath it so creators like filmmakers, comedians, you name it, can basically shoot high quality entertainment and deliver it directly to you. They take a lion's share of the revenue and we act as sort of uh, a digital studio. And so I, I hate to use the word digital studio because the, the, the studio connotation is all wrong. But I think the, the well, yeah. let me mention, you know, uh, how many of you saw this thing Louis C.K. did last year? That, you know, how many of you know who Louis C.K. is? Most. So last year, what yep. he did was he went and he put, he filmed his own special and he, put it on the internet and said, hey, pay me $5 for it because it's fair. Yeah, it's a DRM-free file. You could probably share it. But because you're my fans and you want to be a part of this, uh, I'm going to sell it directly to you. And you know there are going to be a few parties in here who handle payments, who handle other things. But you're really building a relationship with me, and you're sponsoring me. You're supporting me directly. And you know he did that at, at great cost and complexity, but it worked phenomenally. And what we've said is there's so many different creators from you know comedians to filmmakers to lots of lots of just Musicians. other areas who yep. want to have that same relationship and not everyone is going to build that same set of tools. Let's make it not only easy for them to build but easy for them to make great where it has all of the integration with Twitter and Facebook, all of the community features, it handles you know putting your video on iPads, all the things that if you were just building it yourself you wouldn't get right and give that tool to them. And I think that building that next generation of, of tools for people to, to share and put things on the web is the long-term play. And the short-term play is to really just say, hey, we've got the tool to let you create and do what you want. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, I, how many people here are like in, involved in the film school? Um, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about where, you know, how this is directly relatable to, to where you sit is I'm sure, I know that most of the people in the film school have a, have a project at the end of the year where you're going to shoot something, maybe it's 15 minutes, who knows, maybe it's 30. Uh, you don't have to ask for permission now to put this on the internet and to get this widely distributed and to make money and to have other people discover you. And you know, if you wanted to start even five years ago and think about what it would take to distribute an independent film, it, I mean, you would literally have to, you know, putting needles in your pupil and you're, to, to understand all of the different things you would need to do. And then you would have someone shake you down for $5,000. And unfortunately, it was just a terrible experience. So we're saying, you know, if you're a creator, don't ask for permission. If you have a fan, if you have an fan in an audience base from Twitter, Tumblr, MySpace, any of these places. Um, MySpace. MySpace, sorry. I had to mention that. Um, 
<laughs> this is a this is a place this is a place for you, and it's a safe place. And so we did a, our, one of our first comedy specials in um, December. Um, the comedian was uh, was called Maria Bamford. Um, she made uh, her budget back in 72 hours, and you know quadrupled her budget within a month. And you know why that's important is you know we we face the same set of challenges that you do. People say this is not possible, this is too early, you guys don't have the correct sort of entertainment pedigree to make this work. And we'll be doing, you know, we have five more major comics in our slate in the next, you know, call it uh, uh, 120 days. And so it's amazing, you know, when you look at all the work that we've done, the cumulative, it, it, you know, when people say, what is success? I think of success as like sort of a cumulative effort. Meaning, you look at all these little things and they add up, and eventually, you know, one plus one equals three. And we're not quite there yet today, but, you know, the future is incredibly bright. And when everyone is thinking the same way, I think there's a famous uh, patent quote. It says, when everyone think is thinking alike, no one's thinking. When everyone's saying, the world is this way, this is how you buy, you watch sports on broadcast, or, you know, you watch a great movie and it's on HBO, that's how it is, that's when things start to change. And so it's a very interesting time in Hollywood. Hollywood is, is very young right now, is very, very innovative in comparison to where, they've, where they have been. And you know, I think in, in five to 10 years, those of you that are looking to be in the entertainment business, it is gonna look so much different than it does today. I mean, the entire deck chairs are, are, are shifting. 